Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is June 22nd, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see our upper level low spinning right across Idaho there. We're going to get some wraparound moisture as we go through the day today. We'll take a look at some of that. We'll take a look at what is coming next as the slow continues to trek off to the east, and we'll see what's coming up as we go through this week and on into next weekend. Taking a look here at the last 24 hours. Lightning strikes across portions of California, Nevada, eastern Oregon, up through Idaho, and some portions of south central British Columbia as well. You didn't see anything across western Washington or western Oregon yesterday, even though we had quite a bit of rainfall here for some of these locations. And I'll show you what Portland got here yesterday as well, actually starting right now. Look at Portland. So the all-time uh, daily record low high temperature was 60. So we just blew that out of the water there. 57 it only got there for Portland, Oregon yesterday. And look at this two-day total, uh, 85 hundredths of an inch versus 89 hundredths of an inch. What a storm there for Portland, Oregon. You can see on the 20th, that three means they did register a thunderstorm there as well. So almost up to two inches there so far for the month of June. And <clears throat> I'm going to show you why this uh, precipitation is very beneficial at this time of year here coming up in a moment. And you might think that things have been, you know, either above or below normal, depending on your individual experiences. But a departure from normal right now, a little bit above normal for the month of June, 1.4 degrees above normal. Now, look at thunderstorm activity again today. This checks out. You can see it does include some of the Washington Cascades, especially east slopes. Of course, Lake Chelan, maybe Wenatchee with some rapid around moisture coming back down across the area. That would include British Columbia as well. Just clip in northeast Oregon, Idaho, much, much of western Montana also. And this is day two, kind of a repeat there, kind of clipping some areas and some of the areas down for uh, California. But you can see there is a tornado threat again uh, today also out there as well. I thought I'd point that out. Uh, if anybody has any friends across the Dakotas or out there across Minnesota as well, there's a tornado wind and hail threat out there also. So uh, fire danger, of course, we put this at bay here for a couple days. And you see it's down across some of the Four Corners region, some of the southwest here as well. But nothing for the Pacific Northwest just yet. And my weather station picked up about uh, 0.36 inches of precipitation yesterday and it has a lightning detection system. I did not get lightning on it this round. Well, I should check, actually, maybe a couple days ago, I might have gotten a lightning strike there. We'll look at it here in a moment. Um, also, the Patreon page, just wanted to remind you, you can send me some of your images there. Uh, if you go to the community tab, it is free to do so. So check it out. You can also support the channel here as well. So I'll show you my weather station here in a moment, I believe. Now, looking at the European model, 500 millibars, you can see our upper level low now tracking across the Intermountain West. And of course, we're going to get some wraparound moisture again. I'll show you some of that here in a moment. And then you can see as we go through this week, we're not done with the troughing yet. But it, this next one is not nearly as strong, but that's going to bring some precipitation across the area. And of course, it's going to keep the temperatures from getting too high. And then as we go towards this weekend, though, look at the European right at the end there. You see that as we go towards the weekend, that ridge trying to build. Are we going to get that here in time enough for uh, a nice weekend and some a nice weather here across the region? Well, we'll be watching that in the extended forecast here in a moment. And I've been mentioning this. Uh, these are soundings here, and this is at 10,000 feet for Quileute, Washington, the northwest Washington coast where we launched these sounding balloons. And uh, you can see as we go through these summer months, we're definitely warming things up. The mid-latitude cyclones get weaker. The tropospheric polar vortex is weaker at this time of year. And it really peaks in late July and through August. Then we start to slow down. We're trek here as we go on in through October, November, December, and January. And you guys know how strong our systems can be during those months. Now, looking at lightning flash density potential today. So as we scroll through the afternoon, look at this here across some portions of these slopes of the Cascades of Washington. Watch out for these. Could be prolific lightning producers, including Northeast Oregon, Idaho, Western Montana, and across uh, British Columbia there as well. And you can see those moving down into some of the Columbia Basin, meaning northern portions of the Columbia Basin here as we go through the afternoon and evening hours. And then we go on and through Monday as well. You see some of these clip in Northeast Washington, Central British Columbia as well again on Monday afternoon. Afternoon. Now, look at the European. So we have some precipitation on the way, and I want to show you what's coming up as we go through the midweek period. There's the troughing right there. You can kind of see this generally light precipitation amounts, but again, it's going to keep the clouds around and keep the temperature suppre uh, suppressed to a degree here across the area before next weekend comes, and we potentially start to warm up a bit. Same thing there. So this is my uh, weather station here. 
And you can see 0.36 inches of precipitation. Let's check this out. Now, th those thunderstorms, it looks like they were a little bit too far away a couple days ago to re uh, register on my station. So I did not pick those up. But you can see already UV index 1.3 outside is not currently raining. Shows the rain yesterday. So yeah, a very fun weather station. Click on that link down below if you want to save 10% off. You can go in here and you can graph these, you know, graph all this data for you if you want. It stores all this data for you in the cloud. Very fun stuff. Now, look at a 24 hour running total here on precipitation upcoming so as we go through this will be about through monday afternoon we scroll on ahead here we want to see what this next trough brings so you see it does bring some light precipitation on on the day wednesday there for seattle maybe a little bit down towards western oregon but it's not a lot you notice these totals are not nearly what the last trough is going to bring us here now, daily two meter max temperature. This is Sunday, June 22nd. That is today. Look at Seattle bumping back up to 71 here. Same thing for uh, Oregon. I mean, this is 16 degrees warmer than yesterday. So get out there and enjoy that for Portland. And look by Monday, you're back up to 80 degrees for Portland, upper 70s for Seattle. So we are warming back up. And there is Tuesday, we bounce back out to 78 and some 80 showing up for the Willamette Valley, even warmer across some of Southern Oregon there. Columbia Basin into the 90s as well. Then we go Wednesday. That next system starts to slide in here. You can see it knock the temperatures down yet again as we go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But then by Saturday and Sunday, look at we bounce those temperatures back up yet again. Look at 80 for Southwest BC. Look at some of the interior valleys warming up into the 90s all the way up into British Columbia there as well. So uh, interesting stuff. We'll see how quickly that ridge is going to get in here. But, but look by Monday, 81 for Seattle, over 100 for some portions east of the mountains, including Boise. You can see we are talking about Bend, Oregon, maybe into the lower 90s as well and then tuesday wednesday thursday who knows what's going to happen after that so what i've got here is the european artificial intelligence on the left versus the ensemble mean here on the right and of course we've got our upper level low with us right now we scroll on in towards the mid portion of this week and you can see that we do have this a slight weak trough here as we go through the midweek period but then the ridging starts to build in here as we go towards the weekend the ensemble mean is going to be more smooth just as naturally here because you got 50 ensemble members it's kind of averaging things out but the artificial intelligence shows a better ampli amplification of that ridge deeper trough out over the gulf of alaska we can kind of see the similarities there there's a trough in the same place ridge in the same place as well so starting to gain some confidence in a bit of a warm up here this weekend and on in towards early next week but then what's going to happen after that because you can see this next system approaching if that becomes negatively tilted we could get some interesting weather here yet again across pacific northwest you also see the troughing here kind of showing up so still some model agreement all the way out through the 10-day period about 246 hours out and we scroll through there and again that would be an interesting system going into the early portion of july we can get thunderstorms here across some of the region if something like that does set up so scroll out a bit further into the forecast there and you can kind of see things get a bit more messy and smoothed out in the ensembles and then you can see you know not much to write home about in the extent of forecast on the european artificial intelligence but now let's take a look at the european on the left versus the gfs ensemble mean on the right and we'll scroll through here and, and as we go towards this week and i want to show you a little bit of a caveat here because you can kind of see the ridging starting to try to build in a little bit there but the gfs is much not much more, but somewhat more zonal flow here. That would keep us a bit cooler. A similar pattern overall, but there are some differences. We got to work out these kinks as we get closer to that. And then you can kind of see if we go to the extent of forecast, these ensembles just kind of smooth thing out. But they do kind of show this troughing here at times as we go through the early portion of July. Now, <clears throat> why was this been rainfall so beneficial? Because just in the most recent drought monitor before the storm came rolling in here, we had moderate drought increased so, uh, a lot of places, Snohomish County, King County, Pierce County, a lot of Western Washington. We also actually uh, included some severe drought across portions of western oregon so again very beneficial precipitation with this last storm northeast oregon as well got some severe drought introduced and uh, yeah we had the abnormally dry uh, reintroduced across some areas as well and expanded in others and uh, moderate drought expanded across western oregon again this is two weeks ago and this was the one issued on thursday so 
<clears throat> six to ten day above normal signal there take that with a grain of salt right now but you know that's the overall trend still above normal as we go through the end of the month and there's the six to ten day kind of a mixed bag across some of the region here as well but anyway hope you guys enjoyed that upper level low it's not done cascades east watch out lake chelan wananshi british columbia northeast washington some of northeast oregon still those thunderstorms rolling around here um but a uh, eyes on the sky today and hopefully somebody will send me a picture of some cool clouds they get um, dust devil chasing is going to have to wait a little bit here. Hopefully as we get into July and August, those are prime dust devil chasing months anyway. But yeah, we've uh, kind of keeping these clouds around. It's keeping my first dust devil chase at bay for now. But anyway, uh, yeah, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.